Donald Trump. Ooh. I feel like I was um <laughs> sucker punched by America on that one. I've been arrested 18 times for my art, but I would be in jail permanently if it weren't for my art. Art somehow manages to break through predispositions, social structures, and some people are intimidated by art, but we all know what it feels like to experience art that moves us, whether it's music, whether it's visual art, whether it's film, whether it's theater, whether it's stand-up comedy. I don't know the year that you started putting up your early work, but it seems to be imprinted on my mind. That time when I was living in Hollywood, and I remember that being just a part of the fabric of the city. What prompted that initial work of yours? Well, I really started coming to LA to do my stuff on the street when I moved to San Diego. And I would just drive around with a couple of buckets of glue and a whole trunk full of posters and put stuff on electrical boxes. Everyone in L.A. drives, so you've got a captive audience at every stoplight. And I would put my work there, and my work was always designed to cut through the clutter of the urban environment, break through the white noise, and be the anti-advertisement advertisement. What is the world like without art? The world without art is much more fearful. So when I say art, I'm talking about the design of the next iPhone, video game, a movie, a book cover, an album cover. Art is everywhere. Even from an economic standpoint, art is incredibly important because what does the United States export? Culture, that's our biggest export. It's absolutely foolish to de-emphasize it Tell me about the now infamous Obama piece. I created the Hope poster in 2008, just like any other piece of art, not officially through the campaign, but just as a piece of grassroots activism. When Barack Obama announced his candidacy, I looked at his point of view on several things. I knew that he had voted against the Iraq war. He wanted to support a green economy. He wanted to push for universal health care. These were all things he said that I thought were the antithesis of Bush and were perfectly aligned with what I'd like to see. I made 300,000 posters and half a million stickers. And uh, I was amazed that it went viral the way it did. Where I think most propaganda is meant to say this is the answer and it's the end of the conversation. My art is meant to be the start of the conversation. When I created the image and, and posted it on my website, it came with a statement from me saying, do your own research and make your own decision. So the idea that we're not spectators in this democracy, that beyond voting, we still have things that we can do that might make a difference. I'm really happy to be able to say that. If you had an opportunity to sit and talk with President Trump, what would you say? I think what I'd say to Trump is, you have children. I think you understand what it's like to love someone who at some point is vulnerable. Find in yourself the same empathy and compassion that you found as a father and apply that to the nation. Why do you think the election turned out the way that it did? I think in large part because a lot of Americans don't take the time to research what the real dynamics of the issues are. Noam Chomsky made a really great point, which is that Americans aren't incapable of learning about complex things, but they just choose not to. For example, if you listen to a call-in sports show, 
The people know every single variable you can imagine. And if they only applied that same um, <laughs> level of rigor to policy and the candidates that they choose, our political system would look very different. What are your thoughts on an optimistic future? Sometimes I think that it takes things going in a very bad direction for people to have the perspective they need. I think that happened under George Bush. You know, by the end of his presidency, people realized that he and his policies were not what they wanted. I think a lot of people don't like the idea of xenophobia, sexism, racism, moving backward toward a time when those things were okay. I'm optimistic that there are going to be cultural sea change things that happen and that people see the need to bond meaningfully with others.